week six of Better Together, and some of you are like, when's this series ever going to end? So we're going to continue on, and uh, the first week of August, we're going to uh, regroup, and we're going to go a different direction, but I just really feel like this is the direction God's taken us as a church. There is so much division and strife in our culture today. One person agreed with me. I'll say it again. There's so much division and strife in our culture today. It's not just race now. They've made it about gender. And they're going to continue because, listen, bad news sells. And they're trying to get people worked up. But as a church, we are better together. together. You may not see things like I see them. You may not, and those, those opinions at the end of the day really don't matter. Listen, I, I, I married a beautiful, I married up, it's called Grace. God bless me. But Martha and I, it, it, the boys are kind of slowly leaving the house and we're becoming empty nesters. Um, she knows what I like and what I don't like. But she'll make her a salad every night and she will always ask me, do you want some salad? To which my answer is, no. (laughs) She will make her something, and she, I'm in this, uh, those chicken fried steak fingers. Listen, I could have them every night of the week, I'd be happy. My cholesterol may be sky high, but I'm going to go to heaven quicker than you are. Come on, somebody say mashed potatoes and gravy I just you know that's just and and so she she knows me now and so she didn't even ask last night I thought well what's what's for what's for dinner and and uh, was the night before last and she knew what to make me so um, we're we're on the same page here that's good (laughs) Acts chapter 2 I want to talk to you today about being better together and I want to talk to you about the subtitle is simply this before and after results before and after results. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from, everybody shout heaven. And filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that set to rest on each of them. All of them. Everybody say all. Not some of them. But all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment. They're like, what's going on? <clears throat> because each one heard their own language being spoken. I want to stop there for just a moment give you a story. When we were student pastors in northeastern Oklahoma... We had a family in our church that would bring in foreign exchange students from East, West, Germany. And this particular year, China had opened its doors and had not been opened for years. Well, they picked her up on a Saturday in Dallas, Texas. She came to church Sunday. She gave her heart to Christ that Sunday. I just happened to be preaching that Sunday morning. The following Wednesday, I was, I was making a big Holy Spirit emphasis um, and during that time. And there was a lot of kids that came forward. When Luna landed in America, she could speak virtually no, no English. And when we began to pray for students, she didn't know. She just got saved. She said, yeah, I, I want more of Jesus. And when she came forward, she began to speak in an unknown tongue. Listen, that's what's happening here. But her unknown tongue, this is crazy was English. Not being able to speak a lick of English, and now she's saying things like, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to my heart. Thank you, Jesus, that you're watching over me, that you've, you're going to be with me. And when I go back home, my parents are going to be saved. I walk by praying for other students, and Martha is praying there for this young lady, Luna, And she catches me and she said, Kevin, she's been filled with the Holy Spirit. And I said, no, honey, she just learned a lot of English in three days. (laughs) That language that God had gave her, she did not know even how to speak. But the Spirit of God spoke through her. 
afterwards, I went up to her and I said, Luna, you, you, you've learned a lot of English because I'm still not. And she said, no. <laughs> that was a sign. The very same thing's happening here. It was a sign. When they heard this, they were in bewilderment. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that, that each of us hears them in our native language? Perinthians, Medes, Elements, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontius, and Asia, Phygra, and Pompophilia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the works of God in our own tongues. They ask each other, as they were amazed and perplexed, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them, and they said they've had too much wine. And Peter stick, stands up with boldness, and he says, fellow Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And by the way, I'm still seeing visions. Thank you very much. <laughs> Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and the signs of the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, the moon to blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, thank you for your word today. And I ask God that you would help me go beyond my ability. And your Holy Spirit would take me to a place of greater anointing. Not for me, but for your, and for your spirit for your people. I pray your Holy Spirit would move in an incredible way. In Jesus' name, amen. The church of Jesus Christ was established on the day of Pentecost. King James says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come. And through the gift of the Holy Spirit, the church came together with great unity and power, and they began to witness to the world Great signs and wonders followed them. You would have thought the church would have been established when Jesus was on the earth for three and a half years, teaching, building his ministry. But it didn't happen the way they they thought. You would have thought that the disciples, they they would be scattered, they'd be fearful, they'd be afraid, and, and they were. That is, until Pentecost. I know some people that are scared of that word, literally, that word freaks them out because they've heard of things from people or they've seen things in church and it kind of wigs, just just weirds them out. Conduct a survey really quick. How many of you see some weird stuff in church before? Raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. I have to. And, And we equate that to I, I don't want the Holy Spirit because I don't want to do anything weird. We, we think of it in terms of what we perceive and what other people have told us. And the word Pentecost is not some scary out there kind of thing. Pentecost in itself simply means, catch this, if you're, don't be freaked out. Pentecost means 50. Ooh, five zero, that's all it means. And the 50 days following the resurrection of Christ to the outpouring of the Spirit or Pentecost, which then we get the term Pentecostal, those who have received the Holy Spirit, okay? It simply means 50. 
Remember, when Jesus was resurrected, he walked with them. He showed them through many infallible proofs that he was indeed the Son of God, that he had been raised from the dead. And then he, before he ascends into the heavens, he said, go and wait in Jerusalem till you're endued with power from on high. Then you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and other most parts of the earth. So what I want you to see is, is a connection this morning from the Old Testament, everybody say old, to the new. The, the Feast of Shavuot, or Pentecost in English, is one of the three great pilgrim feasts that God told the Jewish people to celebrate in Deuteronomy 16. It occurs 50 days after the Feast of of Pesach, or Passover. This holiday described in Leviticus chapter 23 was primarily an agricultural festival and celebrated, follow me here, track with me, I'm, I'm having to read just, I want to make sure that I get it completely down. However, in Jewish history, it also had greater significance. Rabbis and theologians determined that through the Pentateuch, or the first five books of the Bible, that the timing of the Feast of Shavuot, or Pentecost, coincided with a great event in Jewish history where God gave the Torah, or the law, to Moses on Mount Sinai. The Israelites left Egypt on the 15th day of the first month. They get to where God told Moses to go to Mount Sinai after 40 days. And then Moses went on top of Mount Sinai, came down after 10 days, and he has the Torah, he has the law, and he, it's for us. He says, this is very special, and, and this is very important, and the total time lapse approximate 50 days after Passover, and then came Pentecost. Since Passover was an exodus related like the feast of Sukkot in the fall, the Jewish sages concurred that Shavuot must be, or Pentecost must be exodus related as well to celebrate the occasion which God revealed himself to his people and made a covenant with them by giving them his written instructions on how they were to live, thus the Torah. What is the importance of this? The great event is described in Acts chapter 2 that we just read when the Holy Spirit appeared and rested upon tongues of fire, individual believers occurred on the Feast of the Shabbat or Pentecost. The same day the Jews were celebrating God's giving of them the Torah on the tablets of stone, the Holy Spirit came and wrote his Torah on people's hearts. And it confirmed God's promises. Jeremiah 33, very important scripture, verse 31. Listen, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I'll make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my, co my covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord, this is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel. After that, de that time, declares the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and in their hearts. And I will be their God, and they will be my people. So what happened at Pentecost was the fulfillment of the promise that happened in the Old Testament. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away of the law, but he said, I came to fulfill the law. So God planned all this 1,200 years to the day. To the day. There's some amazing parallels that I want you to catch real quick. Twelve things. I want you to, real quick, I want you to focus with me. Both events occurred on mountains. Mount Sinai and Mount Zion. Both of them are known as the mountains of God. Both events happened to a newly redeemed people. The Exodus marked the birth of the Israelite nation, while Pentecost served to mark the birth of Christianity. Both events involved God's people receiving a gift, the Torah in the Old Testament, the Spirit in the New. Both events, in both of these events, the gift was given by God settling on a mountain with fire of His Spirit. Both events took the 
took place at the same time on the same month. The Israelites left Egypt, and 40 days later, they arrived at Sinai. Then Moses goes up to the mountain to see God. Ten days later, Moses comes down with the Torah, and he sees the golden calf, and it breaks. He breaks. The Ten Commandments, the Torah, the law. Jesus died on Passover, and 40 days later, he went up to a mountain to see God, the ascension. And 10 days after Jesus ascended, the Holy Spirit came down, and 3,000 people were saved. 3,000 died when they broke the law. 3,000 were saved when they received the law. Not on on a stone tablet, but in their hearts. Fifty days after sacrificing Passover lamb, the Israelites received a covenant from God. Fifty days after sacrificing Jesus, our ultimate Passover lamb, believers received a new covenant from God. Both events had similar sounds, symbols of wind, fire, smoke, voices. The Hebrew word translated thunder in Exodus is kolot, which means voices or language. And what happens at Pentecost? Fire, wind, languages. The fire at Sinai was one fire visible by all, but the fire at Pentecost was individual fires that set upon each of them as cloven tongues as fire that brought them much closer. And the event at Mount Sinai, the people were kept away from the fire, but in Acts, the people came to the fire. Both events have theophanies. What is what is this theophany? It means a divine visitation of God. In both events, God gave his Torah, his law, to his people. In both cases, he sealed it with a covenant that he had made with them. At Sinai, he gave them the law written by his finger on tablets of stone. But at Pentecost, he gave the law written on tablets of their hearts. In both events, mixed multitudes of people were represented. The Torah attempted to change people from the outside. Catch this. From without, but the Holy Spirit changes from within. The word Torah means teaching, and the Holy Spirit is called the teacher. 1,200 years to the day. How many of you think, how many of you know God has a plan? And everything with God is precise. Everything with God is, is it, nothing's by happenstance, nothing's by accident. If 3,000 people died because they couldn't keep the law because Moses and God himself was angry, but 3,000 were saved on the day of Pentecost, how many of you know God is a God of grace and God of mercy? And even when we fail, he says, I've got something better for you. I've got a new covenant. I've got a gift for you. Come on. I want that gift, don't you? Second yeah. Corinthians chapter 3 says this, who also made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, because for the, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. So before and after, results. I want to live a life that is pro- productive. I want to have, I want to see results. You know, you watch those infomercials, I think they still have them. Promising you, if you will take this pill, you will lose 20 pounds in 20 minutes. <laughs> Obviously, I'm, 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 I'm exaggerating, but money back guarantee, but you've got to pay for shipping and handling. But they don't tell you that shipping and handling is over $300. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy and... and, 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 and I am obviously not stupid enough to watch that infomercial and buy whatever they're trying to sell. You know, you, you're, you can have, you know, six-pack abs in, in just two days if you just take this thing that vibrates you, you know. And, and I'm not that stupid, but I'll have to be honest with you. When we moved here, a few years after we moved, everybody's talking about going to the state fair. So we went, and we went to a place to where they were showing off their expos and showing off different, and there was an iron And I was watching this guy demonstrate, and this would be the last iron you would ever ever have to buy. And this guy was showing me, and Martha's like, come on, honey. I'm like, this iron's only $350. 
And I'm not usually gullible, but in that moment, and then there was a, there was a lawnmower, you, it was a robot, and I was just like, wow, listen, I'm a country boy. I've never been to the state fair except to show pigs or, or, or cows, you know, and, that, and I didn't ever go over to that part of it, but I'd never been to Oklahoma City State Fair. It's much larger, and, and so, and she's like, honey, it's a scam. It's a scam. It's, you, you, you're, you're too gullible in this moment. Listen, I would have bankrupt our bank account that day had it not been for my wife and her wisdom because she'd been there, done that, so, but I'm not usually that gullible. I believe the biggest lie the enemy has told the church all over the years is don't, the Holy Spirit's not for you. The Holy Spirit is not for that church. It's the Holy Spirit's not for you. Be scared of it. Be afraid of it because because it'll mess you up. It'll make you do something weird. Come on, how many of you have ever had that thought? If I get the Holy Spirit, I'm going to do something weird. Come on, I'm, I'm looking at her hands. Keep them up so I can see. I mean, the Holy Spirit is not weird. The Holy Spirit is the third part of the Trinity. It's it, the, whole, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is of order. Now, there are some things that I've seen in church that I can't explain. A very good friend of mine was talking about years ago, he was preaching, and this lady, they went back into a chorus, and they were getting ready to have a a time of response, and this lady on the worship team just kept singing the same thing over and over and over again. And she kept thinking, why am I doing this? And she said the Holy Spirit, not in an audible voice, but it is still soul voice, just kept saying, singing that song, singing that song, singing that She said she must have sang it 15 times through. But what she didn't know was there in Fresno, California, There was a writer that was there from the local newspaper that came to write a scathing review of that church because that church was trying to buy property in downtown Fresno, California, and he was trying to make it to get to the people, the public saying, we don't want that kind of craziness happening in our church. It was a Pentecostal church, mind you, in California. And so God put it on his heart And he makes this statement, God, if she sings that song one more time, I'm going to do cartwheels down that aisle. I'm sorry, I messed up the story. Martha's like, you messed it up. That worship pastor, that young lady kept singing that same song. God spoke to her and said, I want you to do cartwheels, cartwheels down the aisle. That man that was back there to write the scathing review said, God, I've never, he'd never been even church. And he said, God, if you'll have someone do cartwheels down his front, that, that aisle, he said, I'll run to that altar and give my heart to you. She said, I've never done that in my life before. I've never done it since. She said, I did cartwheels down the center aisle. That man got up and ran to the altar and gave his heart to Jesus Christ. Before and after results. You know what that's about. You know, before the holidays, you weighed. (laughs) Then after the holidays, you. Come on, let's just be honest. Before the kids were in the house, you had hair. (laughs) Or you had hair that wasn't gray. Before the kids in the house, you had no money. Hopefully when they leave, leave, you'll have some money. Come on, somebody, say amen. With that thought before and after in mind, I want you to help me. Think about the church before the Holy Spirit, before, before Pentecost, but then after. Peter could not even say to a little girl, I am a follower of Christ. But after Pentecost, he stood, stood up and preached and 3,000 were saved. They were locked behind closed doors for fear of persecution But on Pentecost, they came out preaching, teaching, living it, and thousands were saved. People's lives, Peter's own shadow would fall upon the sick and they would be healed. Come on, I want that kind of power here at Discovery Church, don't you? I want his Holy Spirit moving. And if it's a little bit weird, just get over it. I mean, we understand, we we think we understand salvation, but really the the details of everything that comes, we, we, listen, we, were, we are to walk by faith and not by. God says, I want to give you a gift. 
And if God says he wants to give us a gift, he said every good and perfect gift comes from God, comes from the Father in the shadow of lights in whom there is no variance or shadow of turning. In other words, God knows how to give good gifts to his kids. This is not some kind of scam. So I want to I do my best to try to help you understand if you know Christ as your Savior, that is the most important, most important thing. The most important. You will have opportunity. You live a life of obedience. God's going to, you're going to go to heaven. But there's a, there's a difference between going to heaven as a saved person than going to heaven as a person who's been filled with the Holy Spirit. You have power. Everybody say power. I need power. This world's messed up, jacked up. I don't want to be. I want to overcome temptation. I want to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I want to walk in miracles, signs, and wonders. I want them to follow me as it happened in the book of Acts. I need power. So I know that there was an incredible results that happened as a result of their infilling with the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in John chapter 16, he tells his disciples, I know you're sorrowful. I know you're, I'm fixing to leave. He said, I know you don't understand it right now. He said, but actually it's a good thing that I'm going away. Now how in the world could it be a good thing that Jesus was leaving? Jesus was everything to them for three and a half years. He taught them how to live. He taught them how to pray. And Jesus said, it's a good thing. He said, it's a good thing because if I do not go, I'll not be able to send the advocate who is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. He will give you the very words to say in the hours that you need those words. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not some kind of weird thing that, that, that we have made it out to be or have these preconceived ideas about what it's about. It's the third part of the Trinity, and God wants you to receive a gift of the Holy Spirit, this gift, and God says it will revolutionize, it will, it will, you will see a before and you'll see an after. So Jesus tells them as he is ascending, he says, I want you to go in Jerusalem and I want you to go into her upper room and I want you to pray. And they were still focused on themselves. They said, okay, will you again restore Israel at this time? We can get so inwardly focused. They wanted an earthly kingdom. Jesus said it's about a heavenly kingdom. And Jesus redirects them and he says, he didn't answer the question. It is not for you to know the times or the seasons the Father has put in his own power, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the earth. And after he'd said this, he was taken up into the heavens. We talk about famous last words. What was Jesus' famous last words? Go and wait, go and tarry, till you receive this gift, power. Now at Discovery Church, we're a blend. We have Catholic, we have, we have, we have Presbyterian, we have Baptist, we have Church of Christ, we have all kinds of, and we want everybody to know that you're loved and you're accepted. This is not, the Simmons of God, the Pentecostals do not have uh, the patent on the Holy Spirit. You understand that? This comes from the Word of God. This is not made up of man. Everything, if you want my notes today, you KFALS at Discovery OKC, you can have them all. Dot org. This is 90% of what I'm sharing today. 90%. I'm going to share stories and, and some examples is all Word of God. So I, I want you to know this gift is for you. And if and if if someone's going to give me a gift that loves me, I would be a fool not to accept that gift. I know that that gift is going to better me. So I want that gift. If you want to buy me a new uh, uh, Ford Raptor, I would appreciate it. And, and I'm going to receive it with a smile on my face. Come on, somebody. But with this Holy Spirit, we, we kind of think, I don't know about it. I don't know. Well, think about it. the only way the church survives 
It was started on the day of Pentecost. Jesus wasn't even here. He sends the Holy Spirit. The only way it not just survives, but it thrives, was them and them receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us. So, five things I want to give you real quick, real quick, real quick. Better together, number one, because they were cut to the heart and we are going to be cut to the heart. Peter preaches this message on the day of Pentecost. And when the people heard this, the Bible says in Acts 2, verse 37, they were cut. Everybody say cut. They were cut to the heart. And Peter said to the other apostles, what are we going to do? What does cut to the heart mean? Cut to the heart means being so deeply moved by what you hear or what you see that it makes you do something. They were cut to the heart. And because they were cut to the heart, Peter said, hey, I know your heart is being cut. I know you're being stirred right now. I know you're being touched. And so all you got to do is repent and believe, be baptized, and you will receive forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you've never received the gift of the Holy Spirit, it's all good. You can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I've done this, Pastor. I've done that. I've done this. I've done that. I've done this. I've done that. And some people believe the Holy Spirit was only meant for that time. But Peter goes on to say in 38 and 39, this is for you, for your children, and for all those called afar off. What does that mean? It's for all of us. It's for all of us. It's for all of us. But pastor, my, 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 I'm just very quiet. I'm just very reserved. I don't know that you're going to receive your prayer language like I did. I was eight years old. I had people praying with me. I'll never forget this. About 1030 at night. I mean, this is old school. And people were praying, let it go. Hang on. Hang on and let it go. I mean, yelling in my ear as loud as I could yell. And my daddy finally just moved them all the way. And he said, son, you love Jesus. Jesus loves you. God wants to give you this gift. Are you ready to receive it? I said, yes, sir. And I started speaking in tongues as the Holy Spirit. And it was just bubbling up from within. And, and, and I received it. But it was only after my father removed the chaos. If the Holy Spirit is not for us today. I know people in our church in the last two, three weeks, they didn't receive the Holy Spirit. Some re one person received it while I was preaching. Another received it during worship. This is happening at Discovery Church. But listen, we want to open the door for more of it happening because we want power in our church. And it happens through the Spirit of God. I'm going to give you an example. Come here, come here Daly. Hurry, hurry, hurry. So Pastor Luke, Pastor Luke has been speaking the last two weeks, and Farley came in the first service and was with me, and Daly came uh, first service. Farley had to go to Stillwater, uh, God's anointed place. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. And uh, for something for his family. And Daly, not just last Wednesday night, what happened? Uh, got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Was it a little bit weird? Yeah, a little bit. Did you hang from some kind of light? No, no. Did you act crazy? Mm -mm. Daly has led approximately 15 of his wrestling team in Reno High School to the Lord. That was before daily. I'm anxious to see the after daily. <laughs> Big time. Big time. We get so caught up, listen to me, with the tongue thing that we hit. The tongue is just part of the process. It's the, the Bible calls it the initial physical evidence. It doesn't say that, but it, we see in every instance just about that happened like that. But, but I want to tell you something. 
Why did God choose our tongue? God could have taught us to do anything. You could have been filled with the Holy Spirit and started doing this. <laughs> Problem with that is someone would have called 911 because they thought you were having seizures. Right? Just, he could, I'm not trying to be blasphemous. I'm just saying God could have been, that would be, but God didn't do that. Why did God use it? This is why I believe God used the tongue. Because in James chapter 3, the Bible says the tongue is the most unruly member of all of our body parts. Anybody ever said something stupid? <laughs> Daily didn't make it up. Daily wanted it. And God said, I want to give it to you. Amen. Pastor, I wasn't raised that. I don't care how you were raised. This is straight from the word of God. Amen. God wants you to receive this gift. I prayed for a woman some months ago. She said, I want to receive this gift. I said, great. I said, speak that word God gave you. She said, no. I said, I believe you were filled with the Holy Spirit. I said, speak that word. She said, Kevin, it's pastor. She said, pastor, it's only a word. I said, speak it. About a week later, she came to me and she said, I should have spoken because, you know, that was the very word. Listen, when your babies are born, they don't come out speaking complete sentences. Unless your name is Carter Fout, so it's just weird. <laughs> and his complete sentence was, he's choking me, he's choking me because his brother was choking him. But that was months later, actually, actually, maybe a year. But my point is this, quit overthinking. Amen. We receive salvation by we receive the Holy Spirit by, how many of you know God's got big plans for daily? Come on, come on, somebody say amen. <laughs> Cut to the heart. Cut to the heart is a good thing, but you know, it can also be a bad thing. I got to hurry. When Stephen is preaching, the Bible says they were so furious, mad, Use that terminology again, cut to the heart. They ran at him, gnashing him with their teeth. They are cut to the heart, but in the opposite way. When Peter is preaching, they got so mad at Peter, they drug him out of the city and stoned him to death. They were cut to the heart. There are people who come inside this setting, and I promise you, listen, they're cut to the heart, but it's, is it, my prayer is you're cut to the heart and God stirs you to change because you feel something so moving in this place in your heart. You've got to change. That's a good thing. But see, the enemy uses it and he so stirs you, you're going to get mad at me. You're going to get upset at me. You're going to be offended at the church. And that's the wrong direction. Peter is preaching. And they say, quit preaching. A man who had been, lame, been laid lame at the gate called beautiful for about 40 years and he's healed and you'd think that'd be a good thing but the Sanhedrin council the religious leaders called him and said don't ever speak this name again and Peter said we him and John were both together he said we ought to obey God rather than man and he said we can't help but speak the things that we studied and learned and God's given us and so they finally let him go and, and but I love the fact that they, they were cut to the heart. They were so mad. Cut to the heart. Every time that you come to Discovery Church, I do not want you to slide off into la-la land in your mind. I want you to listen. I want you to hear. I want you to be touched so touched, your heart is cut. So you are feeling the moving of the Spirit of God. So God is moving your life. When you walk on this campus, when you take your Word of God at home, I pray that God begins to cut you up. And God, that's what His Word does. It's a dividing asunder. It's a two-edged sword. God wants to do a work. He loves you that much. He doesn't want you to be just, just, just going through the motions, playing religion. He wants you to know His Spirit in a personal way. Can you say amen? So we're 
going to pray every person that walks, regardless of what they're going on in their life. They may be jacked up with all kinds of sins and addictions, but I'm praying that when they come through the house, through the house of God, that their heart is so touched, that those addictions they are freed from, their lives are transformed and changed by the power of Jesus because they're cut, they're touched by their heart. God's done a work in their heart. We can become so desensitized. Been there, done that. Pastor preaching about the Holy Spirit again. I've heard it all. Cut to the heart. Let God do a work in your heart. Secondly, better together, they prayed. They prayed together. When Peter and John are released, they go back to the to the church. And they said, listen, we just got released. And um, this is, we need to pray. So they prayed together. I want you to listen to their prayer. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea, everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant David, our Father. Why do nations plot, why do nations rage and peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one, against the church. And they decided to use their power to come against you. And listen to this, and against us. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with greater boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through your name, your holy name and servant, Jesus Christ. Now, listen to this. After they had prayed together, together, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Before, this was after. Let's go back before. Jesus takes Peter and John to the Mount of Transfiguration, right? You know the story. Peter wants to build three temples. Jesus said, no, we're coming down off the mountain because we've got to go do the work that God sent me to do. There was a little boy who kept throwing himself into the fire. He was demon-possessed, Mark chapter 9. And the disciples prayed for him, the ones that were there. And they were frustrated because they could see no, nothing happened. The kid was not changed. And so... Jesus comes down, and he rebukes them. Oh, you have little faith. And he says, you know, and they pulled him aside when they went back into the house. They were alone. And they said, why could we not save him, heal him? And Jesus said, these kinds of things only come but through prayer and fasting. The difference is the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you'll not see your prayers answered. I'm not saying that at all. But there's power, much more power, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm not going to debate the argument. I just know that if Jesus says it's good for me to go into an upper room and receive it, I'm going to obey him. I'm going to go, and I want more of him because I love my Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. I want more of him. I'm not content or satisfied with where I am. I want more. If you want more, shout more. What happens when we pray together? If any two or three agree is touching one thing, it shall be done. We've got to pray together. And as we are better together, we, as we pray, we have power. Acts chapter 4, verse 32, all the believers are in one heart, one mind, and no one claimed that any of their possession was their own, but they shared everything they had with Listen, get this, with great power, the apostles continue to testify the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he goes on. They, they, they have power, power, power. I do not want to be a weak, indifferent, apathetic church. I'm not about, and I'm not ever going to be about, social issues of the day. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus because he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. I'm not going to talk about every concurrent thing that's going on in our culture. I'm going to preach, preach and teach the name of Jesus. Come on. I'm not about my opinions or your opinions, so don't even email me. I'm talking about, listen, let's lift up the name that is above every name, the name that every day, one day, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. We want power because my power is not enough. I've got to have his power, his Holy Spirit resting upon me. 
You think it's all good? Listen, you go through a trial with your kid, you go through adversity, you go through problems, you get a report that you have cancer. You better have some power. And that power comes by being with Jesus and being filled with the Holy Spirit. This last week, a mom who was given up, Tara here today? Tara. Did you wave at everybody? Right over here. Her son was told that he would probably have to have surgery and all kinds of problems. His stomach is not digesting itself. It's not working. We prayed over him right here this last Sunday. Tara literally texted my wife when she got back from the doctor, and she said, the doctor said, I don't know. She said, he said, I'm afraid I'm looking at someone else's paperwork, but as, I, as it stands, your son has been totally healed. He's, God's doing a work in his life. I want power. I don't want to go through the motions. I don't want to just to say, well, let's just have church. Um, that was such a beautiful worship. Pastor, you are such a great orator. That was so, I don't want that. God doesn't want that. The Bible says that Paul was not a great speaker. He said, I came not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration and Power. The last thing is this, and I'm closing. Better together. They were continually, this is very important, filled. I want you to understand this. I was filled with the Holy Spirit when I was eight. But this morning, when I woke up, on my drive to my office, and in my office, I said, God, I need a refilling. A continual refilling. This is over and over and over again in the book of Acts. They were continually being filled. How many of you, especially now, wish you to, today could fill up your truck and it would last you about three years? Come on, somebody. Or you filled up your refrigerator and you're like, it's still full tomorrow. Three weeks later, but that ain't happening. Or you could go to Cracker Bell this afternoon. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> and that taste of cornbread, chicken and dumplings, and brown beans, and pot roll. Come on, somebody. That's, and it would still be with you for a month. But it's not reality. My truck gets 12.2 miles to the gallon. <laughs> it literally costs $210 to fill it up. That's why I never filled up. <laughs> I just put 10, 20 in here and there. I just get to where I'm at. And, and, and I know that, but it gives me opportunity to witness people at the gas pump, so I just do that. <laughs> God wants you to be continually being filled. That's why signs and wonders happened in the early church. They were continually being filled. A little dab won't do you. Continually being filled. Amen. Zephaniah chapter 3 is a very important passage I want you to catch. Speaking of Jesus, the Messiah, when he would come, listen to what he says. For then I will turn, other translation says, return to the people a pure language. That they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. One objective. They were unified. Jesus says, I'll restore a pure language that would unite them and empower them. I want you to think. Let's go back. Genesis 11. There was a tower that they were building called the Tower of Babel. And God himself says, the Lord says, behold, the people are one. And they have all one language. And this they have begun to do, listen, and nothing 
will be restrained from them for what they have imagined to do. Speak in the same language. And so God said, let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, let us go down and confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the earth and they all left. You know what Babel means? Confuse. Babylon means the city of confusion. You know what the objective of the enemy is? To confuse you. I don't know how many people I've counseled with over the years when they were trying to justify their sin, their problems, their situations. I am so confused, Pastor. I don't know what to do. You know why? Because the Spirit of God brings truth. There's a huge difference between truth and confusion. So when you don't know what truth is, seek the Spirit of truth which is the Holy Spirit. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, if Jesus says, when I come back, I'm going to restore a pure language. He's not talking about English, Hebrew. He's talking about, I believe, a heavenly language. Did you know when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, God gives you a different language. Pastor, that wigs me out. That freaks me out. You receive it by faith. We, we're not trying to hide anything from anybody. If you thought this was a Baptist church, you thought wrong because I'm not trying to hide anything from anybody. About a month ago, Holy Spirit moved. I was on this, front, on this, on this stage. I ran and I jumped. And afterwards, I felt that is so stupid. And I said, you know what? I don't care. Because when the Holy Spirit moves, sometimes you do something that's just out of your own. Come on. When you get to heaven, I can promise you, you will not be, oh. Someone asks you what you do. I'm just soaking it in. You're going to be going nuts. Any nuts, any nut people in the house with me? I mean, you, because you're in love with Jesus, you're going to. The Holy Spirit wants you to want Him continuously. This is not a one-time experience. Paul talks about to the church of Ephesus. He says, hey, they just continually want for more. And he said, I want you to continuously be filled with the Spirit. And do not be drunk with wine, which is dispensations, but be filled with the Spirit over and over and over again. 24 years after the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 8, 24 years later, Paul says, but I must be filled again with the Spirit. So you know what's different about Discovery Church? It's not the stage. It's not the lights. It's not. Listen, the Holy Spirit is drawing people to Discovery Church. The Holy Spirit is working in this place. And we are welcome the work of the Holy Spirit each and every time that we meet because I want to pray for the sick and see them recover. I want to see marriages restored. I want to see lives changed. I want to reach Oklahoma City and the west side of Oklahoma City with the love of Jesus Christ. And I can't do that on my own. So I'm going to depend on the Holy Spirit because He can do more in a moment than we can do in a lifetime. Stand with me, would you please, all over this place. Heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. I want to ask you this morning, do you need Jesus to forgive you of sin? Because as I said earlier, that is the most important of every, the most important of ever decision you could ever make. Heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. On the count of three, you need Jesus to forgive you of sin. Just simply raise your hand. I want to pray with you. One, two, three. Hands going up. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. Everybody in the house, say this prayer, prayer with me. There's about seven people that raise their hand. Just keep them up. Everybody say, Jesus I, Jesus, I need your grace to forgive me of my sins. 
please come into my heart and save me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, let me, let me tell you, let's, let's give these a, a hand clap of, yeah, let's welcome them. Now, I want, we're not through because we're going to have a response time. This is very, very important. Did you know many times Jesus would meet their physical need and then he would meet their spiritual need? Yeah. When the woman was caught in the very act of adultery, Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. He said, go and sin no more. When there was people that eyes need to be open, and then Jesus would say, hey, go and sin no more. If you need a healing, if you need a, my prayer is Discovery Church is a place of signs and wonders. Listen, we've seen it over the years, but I believe God gave me a word about a month and a half ago. This is going to intensify and intensify and intensify and intensify and intensify and intensify. It's going to grow. It's going to grow. It's going to grow. Not because of man, but because of his spirit, because of the spirit's power. And so this morning, if you need a sign and a wonder, you need healing from your body, don't sit back there in pride and think, I'm a, I got the best doctor in the world. Listen, you need the greatest physician in all of the universe. His name is Jesus. And so if you need healing in your body, emotional, physical, you need a breakthrough in your finances on the count of three, you want Jesus to touch you. You know the Holy Spirit is here today. I want you to come and you're, we're going we're to gather across this front and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna seek the Lord together on the count of three. You need a sign, you need a wonder, you need a healing from God. One, two, three. Come right now. Come right now. Come right now, from the risers, from the, bay, from, from the bottom floor, you need, to, you need something from God right now. Come on, come on, come on. The second question is this, if you've never filled, listen to me, if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, but you're hungry for it, you're hungry for more of Jesus, it's simply, as simple as that. If you're hunger for, hungry for more of Jesus, I want you to come forward on the count of three. You want Jesus, you want this gift that I talked about. Come right now, come right now, thank you. I see the, yeah, it's awesome. That's awesome. Now, how many of you want to continuously be filled with the Holy Spirit? Raise your hand. All over this place. You want to continue. Today, that starts now. So if you want to continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit, students, you lead the way. We want to be continuously filled. These altars are going to be packed. But come on, right, people in the risers, wherever you are, you want to continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray with you. Prayer team, please gather around. Our leadership team, Tyler the Rain to help us. Everybody, come on. You, you love Jesus. You've been filled with the Holy Spirit. You pray with somebody. You love on them. You encourage them. Come on, let's pray right now. Let's pray right now. Come on, lift those hands up. God, there's miracles that are going to happen today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, throw those hands up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 